So for example, if you have separated smaller standing value from the others, it will also catch it quite well, but otherwise it will get uh, it's quite small. And again, there is no free match. If the matrix is bad for any system with some condition for eigenvalue properties, it's actually not so easy to define what does it mean a bad matrix for competing eigenvalues. So you can measure it in terms of gaps between the spectrum. If the spectrum is very close, it's difficult to distinguish eigenvalues with respect to eigenvectors corresponding to close eigenvalues. So then the conversion will be slow, and without competing inverses, uh, this conversion cannot be uh, made faster. You can use shifted and invert. But the problem here is not the case like the preconditioning. So if you have a so you have, you have so many linear systems, you can actually solve the linear system with the preconditioning inaccurately. And the method will correct, correct the error. Here, if you want to compute eigenvalues, then you multiply by the inverse of this guy. So the eigenvalues are the same. But if you do it inaccurately, you will get up the matrix that has absolutely different eigenvectors. So you have to compute this inverses very accurately, and this makes the shift to the work plus one is almost impractical. However, again, in many cases, this is a good starting choice. Again, one of the project mentions Lanzerschnet from IPM this year, which, which, which is fun. But this is not, if you, this is not the optimal method, especially when we are talking about incorporating preconditions. Okay. For example, I know that I can solve linear systems with the matrix A, maybe not exactly, but with two, three digits. This is not the case of how you apply a such method. And the second point of this picture is the like, state-of-the-art eigenvalue solvers. This is, this is a really state-of-the-art, which, which allows to solve large-scale problems. Mm, yeah. So, so the first one is preconditioned inverse iteration. Another one is a nice acronym log PCG, log the optimal block of preconditioned conjugate gradient. And finally, the so called Jacobi Davidson method. I don't know why it's Jacobi there, what the history. Yeah, but this is a very interesting, probably one of the most efficient solvers. So the state of that is two and two and three. Um, there is a quite good C++ software for solving large scale eigenvalue problems, and they do sort of dynamical switching between uh, log PCG and Jacobi Davidson, depending on the, the, on the size of the system and so on. So, but the idea is different. So, again, so the, this is a classical problem, finding eigenvalues, but you can solve it using many different ways. This is Quite interesting. So the same simple problem can be solved using very different methods. So what's the condition to inverse iteration? So let's formulate our problem as a minimization problem, which is always a good idea. So we take the relay portion. And the minimum, for example, eigenvalue is the minimum of the relay portion. So we might consider that we will be moving in the direction of the gradient descent of the relay portion. So the gradient of the relay portion it's just the residual, a times x minus the rate portion x divided by the square term of x. And what you can do, we can just minimize this function using gradient descent. This is kind of problems. So we just take, this is the gradient, and we can use also a precondition. So for linear system, we'll get matrix in iteration. For eigenvalue problems, we get uh, inverse iteration. Precondition, precondition to inverse iteration. <laughs> So, and what we use is the preconditioner. Here, we do not need to solve uh, multiply. Multiplication by V minus one is equivalent to solving linear system with V, and this is a gradient descent method. And in order to make it convergent, we do not need to have um, exact, uh, exact solution. We only need to have descent direction. The gradient method converges if in our direction is a good descent direction. So we can put here, for example, a shifted matrix, but we can solve this linear system inaccurately. So this two simple formulas, this is just uh, this, this is just
just a precondition for us. And actually, if you could have a reasonable approximation to the minimum likely value, to, to the required ideal value, you can, can reach quite fast. So, you can also do, this is not given here in the form, I can use here. So here you have this parameter tau, but you can also find tau just by minimizing the relay cost. This would be steeper descent. But another interpretation which is more interesting, so if you want to find optimal parameter tau, so what you have? You have a new vector that is a combination of a previous vector plus some other vector. So this is also a subspace vector. So we're looking for a new approximation to the ID vector in the linear subspace spanned by two vectors, xi and this vector ri. So the basis which consists only of two vectors. <coughs> and then we can do reliance. So this is not an orthogonal basis. So instead, uh, so here on the right hand side you've got the computer with ground regions, but still. So, you can, so the steepest descent can be viewed also as a related procedure. So why, why I'm telling you here, it's because we can generalize this idea from one vector to more vectors and also from one direction to, to, to more direction. <coughs> so what can we say about the convergence? So a lot of work has been done by Henry Knesset, who is now at the University of Denver, uh, about the convergence. So there's a deep theory about the convergence of the of the uh, precondition to the operation. So basically it says that that the difference between the <coughs> relay quotient minus the so you, you so what we need to know so we have the spectrum and the relay the, the relay quotient lies between two of the integrators. Then the next one lies between between those two. So I assume, so if, if you have this bound, then the second iterate lies between either to the left side to the right side, and then you can bound how, so, so what you have, you have that Rx plus y is closer to lambda j plus one, is closer than to lambda j. So this thing is smaller than one. So this property says that the, di the, the distance of the relay portion to the right eigenvalue is smaller than the distance of the relay portion to the left eigenvalue. And we want to bound how small it is compared to the one of the previous iteration. We have this number. And, and this is an important property of how, the pre how good is the precondition. So we, we, we want to make sure that our preconditioner at least approximates the inverse of the matrix A in some sense. And what we have here, we have a factor which is strictly smaller than one. So this factor is strictly smaller than one. So if lambda, again it depends on the ratio between lambda j and lambda j plus one, but there is a square here. So there are two properties, so the preconditioner should satisfy this property. And then you have this, again, linear decay, which is controlled by the ratio, but again, uh, also by controlling gamma, for example, if gamma is equal to, uh, to what? Gamma should be as close as possible to, to what? To two zero. To the two one, for instance. So if it's one, this is just zero. That would make more sense. So it should be as close as possible to, uh, to, to zero, right? It should be as close as possible to zero. So in the ideal case, B is just A, so gamma would be zero, right? Gamma would be zero. And you will just have this one minus gamma J of J plus one. So there is a. <coughs> so generalization. So the plot case of the precondition to inverse iteration is absolutely the same. So what you do, you iterate many vectors. Uh, so this is like simultaneous gradient descent. You have many starting points and you are them. If you do not do anything between those points, they will collapse into one point. So what you do, you orthogonalize them. 
you, you are formalizing, but it is better to use relay-based procedure again to find minimum of the relay motion of the relay. So what's the whole idea of the relay reads? You want to find one again vector. It is just minimization of the relay motion of the linear subspace. If you need more eigen vectors, this is the solution of the projected problem. So you have this vertex organized into n times k matrix. You have also k residuals. And then we can put them into a dot matrix. So we have a subspace which is spanned by two k vectors. And we have a subspace, and in this subspace we, we can find new approximation to the embedded subspace just by running a relay reads procedure. So what do we do? We can do the projection of our operator in the subspace, compute the eigenvectors of the small matrix, and so on. Kind of complicated from one side at least, but actually it's very simple to improve. So we only use, in the precondition of first iteration, we only use two directions. We use the, the previous iteration and we use the residual. There are two possible directions, and then we take linear combination of those two in order to find out optimal. So, the, the, what's, what's next? The next idea, of course, is to try to add more directions and try to maybe generalize the idea of conjugate gradient. So this is precondition conjugate gradient. So we take precondition into the residual. But we also add the iteration from the step before. So that's, that's all. That's, that's all you need to know about uh, conjugate gradient methods for any very problems. Just add residual and the previous iteration. So if you use, but, but if you use this, the basis x a minus one x a will be collinear. This is a very bad basis. So instead, we introduce this conjugate direction method pi which is just a linear combination of the residual plus previous ones. And you get exactly the same subspace and the parameters that you may just get from the optimization procedure. That's all. That's the direct analog of the essential method for linear systems. So if you know that, you get the same subspaces, but this is more stable than the previous. So what you do? Uh, so in the standard conjugate direction method, uh, you find the direction that minimizes the relay function. And in this locally optimal conjugate gradient, we optimize over two parameters. That's all. In some sense, it's sort of heuristics, but actually it works quite well. Again, you may say that I might come with a better idea, but uh, that's how, that's how it works. So we have two directions here. See, see this problem. The next direction is a previous one plus the conjugate, and the next x is previous one plus the conjugate, and we have it exactly here. So the new direction is the previous residual plus plus, plus the next conjugate x. And again, we do the same thing for the block case. Now we get three log matrices going on. So we have uh, the previous, the precondition residual and the conjugate direction. But we can eliminate this. It's not difficult. So you do this, you update, you set the respect, and then you, you basically the main computation of burden goes here, besides computing matrix directly from it. This is block. Uh, it has linear convergence in the worst case, but faster than the precondition to the worst iteration because well, you have a lot of subspaces. Uh, you can also use so-called so so deflation, but this is so technical. These are technical details from the data course. So this is the summary. Uh, well, this is a. I think I think this solved as a theoretical insight by the and there are also good software for using that. Uh, so we have one pre optimal precondition solver, which has been in convergence. And uh, well, typically the preconditioning is either the inverse or the shifted inverse with, with a smart shift. It also often works quite well. Uh, but again, there are, there are better methods based on another idea. Combinators are always 
just about the quite middle space. So you go to the space here, quite a, a lot of material, I understand. Yeah, but this, this is a, 